words per minute at the fifth grade level. And she basically went up, you know, shortly after we started and kind of stabilized. And then she went up again and up again. And we moved her to a sixth grade reading level. So, and it was a month, just one month. And she went, her, she gained 51 words per minute in a month. Just reading with me sitting there, being very careful to do nothing other than give her word, you know, say the words. And pointing, you know, pointing out if she skipped little words and things like that. And I thought, wow, you know, this is something that we need to scale this up, you know. And uh, I think that uh, I think that that what the implications of this, and also what some other research is. Oh, uh, excuse me. I have to show her you her gray oral reading test, which I gave her. This is her scores when she came into Groves, probably like last August or September. So she was her rate of reading was the ninth percentile. It was the 37th percentile last week. Her accuracy was about the same, and you know, which meant that she probably made fewer errors, but she's older now. And her errors were relatively few, but you know, it doesn't take a lot to put you in the 16th percentile. Fluency, which is a combination of rate and accuracy, went from the 5th percentile to the 25th percentile. And her comprehension went from the 16th percentile to the 50th percentile, which is amazing. Now, that's just one student. So I'm, you know, I'm, I, I showed this. It's just like one little case study. But I think there are a number of students who fall into that, uh, you know, that uh, profile of a student who has pretty good decoding skills, but they're really slow. And when you're really slow, reading is effortful and kind of painful and not, and you don't get as much out of it. Um, so I, I think the implications of this are that students uh, need consistent and regular oral reading practice somehow, whether this is something that could be done at home with a parent, uh, it could be done probably with uh, volunteers or uh, paraeducators or any number of, of people who might be able to do that. Um, I think older students will benefit from oral reading practice as well as younger students, and I have my observation has been even working with adults is that the more oral reading they do from a variety of texts, types of texts, the, fa the, the, the better they, you know, the, the more they improve their, their fluency and their understanding and so on does that. I don't think you have to have complicated strategies to do this. That's not to say that teachers shouldn't directly instruct students in comprehension strategies because they will need that for more, you know, for more um, critical reading skills and things like that. But for, you know, basic to, 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 to try and uh, support and boost their reading rate and their comprehension, um, you know, just simple oral reading of a lot of different things is really important. Um, I also, I don't think oral reading practice should be timed. I don't, I think uh, I've, there, uh, there are programs that stress repeated reading and timing a lot. Um, I think those are less effective. Um, in fact, what I've, my research on this shows that, uh, that <coughs> When, when you use repeated reading, reading the same passage over and over and over and over again, um, your, score, your timing will go up on that passage, but it doesn't transfer very well. Similarly, it doesn't really improve comprehension because you're only reading this one passage over and over again. So um, I'm, 
and I think uh, <clears throat> some of the programs that, that are based on modeling and repeated reading and timing and things, I think they probably should be rethought, maybe. Um, and, I, and, and then we have to be careful to explicitly teach decoding and vocabulary. So, I think best practices, uh, you know, this is a kind of a messy area of reading and you kind of have to, you know, we don't, we're not as uh, sure of what we need to do as we are with other areas like decoding, spelling, um, even vocabulary instruction and so on. But what I uh, can find is best practices that I use and that I strongly recommend others do too is to have students read aloud. I think it is crucial to fluency growth. Practice should be frequent and consistent. It doesn't have to be long, like 15 minutes has you know, produced this terrific uh, gain in, uh, in the students in the study and also in uh, the student here. Wide reading is preferable to repeated reading. By that I mean uh, read a lot of different things. What I did with, uh, uh, it didn't say this in the, they didn't specify this in the study, but I heard Reed Lyon and others who are experts and so on say that it would be a good idea for students to have more experience reading informational, what we call expository text. So with my, <clears throat> with my sixth grade students, we got, I got books out of the library on lions and tigers and bears and penguins and Amelia Earhart and now we're reading a biography of the Beatles, you know, and things like that, um, that, are <clears throat> that are more straightforward in some ways, but also create a bigger, a bigger range of background knowledge, perhaps. Narratives are wonderful, but they do involve, they involve following dialogue, and, uh, and they don't tend to have as, as, as sophisticated vocabulary as some, as more um, informational books on science and history and biographies and things do. <clears throat> and, you know, um, one thing that we have learned, 80%, uh, it, the students should read 80% of the text if they have support, but no lower than that. Um, and they will need support for decoding and unfamiliar words and understanding. And if you have to make a choice between speed and reading with expression, go for the expression, what we call prosody. Um, and the Wilson Reading System works on that quite a bit, on scooping phrases and recognizing you know, where to pause in a sentence, where to bring your voice tone up, all of that contributes again to just sort of print knowledge. So, um, that's pretty much what I have to share with you tonight. I wonder, do you have any questions or anything that you... Yes? What is your take on um, building fluency through repeated readings of sight words or important words? Well, a sight words uh, definitely, definitely need a lot of drill and, uh, and I think when you drill on sight words, <clears throat> you know, like flashcards and stuff, mm -hmm. sure, you're going to need to, sure, we, I mean, we're not doing away with flashcards here, I mean, you know, let's face it. No, I think that's fine. I'm talking more about connected text. But definitely, um, that definitely students, you know, need, we need to really work on sight words for both reading and spelling. I mean, they, they account for about 20% of our language, our words that don't follow rules. Just some things really interesting. <laughs> we have to teach them. So, so yeah, no, I think that's, that's, you know, in fact, I applaud you for it. Anything else? Are you familiar with Amy's Web? Yes. That's what that's what that's what we use here. Okay. That's Our school what the, uses it also. I was just wondering if you felt that was a pretty good way to measure and 
progress monitor? We're, we're finding that it's working really well for us um, because uh, we've just implemented, we implemented it about a year ago for progress monitoring in our lower school and some of our middle school students as well are using it. Ames Web is like Dibbles. It's a computerized, uh, it's a computerized progress monitoring tool that we have a subscription to, and it will.